from Super League to Olympic distance to age group world records to color. Go longer with the right fuel at the right time with S Fuels. Everybody, welcome to Championship Edition Breakfast with Bob from beautiful St. George. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spa, Zoot Sports, the original triathlon brand, Hoka. Let's fly. S Fuels go longer. Biostarks.com. Use the code BWB10 for 10% discount. Quintana Roo, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zion's Bank, Premium Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Yesterday, he had the race we've been waiting for, Mr. Ben Canute getting second place yesterday at Ironman 70.3 World Championships. How's it feel, Benny? Oh, it feels good. I, I mean, it's always good to be on this show, but it feels even better when you can come back the next day after the race and be on. Uh, well, and it's funny because, you know, we look at the year, and it's just like you were just this close all year long to having that race and just – Every until yesterday, you really didn't have the race that you that you probably felt you were trained for. Yeah, the beginning of the year um, started off pretty strong, yeah. even with not having you know a ton of training. We did a quick build and hit Miami well. Oceanside yes. was just off the pace, and then St. Anthony's was also a, a solid race. But then once we hit that North American champs in Chattanooga, we found we were just a little bit overdone. And then some sicknesses hit with um, like my wife getting the flu, I'm getting a sinus infection. Right. And it just had this about two to three week period of just very minimal training. Right. And when you take a break like that, you need time to build up. But Edmonton ended up being four weeks after. So um, I was just on the back foot through the whole middle of the season and training kept progressing. And I kept seeing stuff that was like, okay, I know I can compete with these guys, but um, it's just not showing like I would just kind of fall apart. And right. sometimes when I fall apart, I really fall apart and just, <laughs> it, it ends up being survival. And that just, it really took me all season. And, uh, they were super tough races. Um, like Edmonton, Collins cup, Dallas, like there's really no hiding there. So it was kind of tough to, to have to shuffle through right. some of those last miles. But, um, yeah, I just kept trusting in the work that we were doing. And yeah, just I was waiting all year and finally able to just have everything line up and put it together. Staying patient during all that. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's easy to question and go, oh my God, do we rip everything up? Do we start over? Or we're just not having the performances we think we should. You've been in the sport long enough to know that there's highs and lows and I just got to be patient because it's going to turn around. Yeah. And that, I mean, we definitely had a lot of sit downs to figure out, you know, why do we think this is happening? And, um, we made small tweaks, mm -hmm. especially with like where we placed the rest or how we did it. Um, and then we just had to keep trusting like, Hey, if I can do this in practice, like I can do this in a race, it's just, let's make sure we try and line everything up and get the execution that we need. So, um, in the grand scheme of things, having, you know, maybe six months of suboptimal or subpar performances is not really that big. Like sometimes an injury or stuff, it can take years and that's, that's true. That's really tough. So, um, I've had it, I guess, easy, but it definitely didn't feel that way. You know, in the middle <laughs> no. of the season when yeah. you see guys who you're like, man, I, I feel like I can race with them. Like yeah. I know I've done it before and it's just out of reach. So, um, honestly it was just fun to like actually race again. Well, and to be in the mix, right? The whole time you were, you know, you, you guys, you and Magnus and Christian mm -hmm. were basically together all day long. You spent, you guys spent a lot of time together. Yeah. Um, it just ended up like, you know, Christian was an animal on the bike right. and we all know Christian is strong, but I think that's probably one of his best bike performances he's ever put together. Yeah. Cause, um, I talked with Fred and Magnus and everybody's like, there's no point in us going to the front because I was riding, you know, the Watts I basically wanted to ride if I was solo. Right. And I was like, okay, well, no better person to follow and just kind of go along. And I was just trying to take it one climb at a time and the legs just kept showing up. I was able to keep, 
you know, sticking with the group. And I think even if, you know, those guys rode away or anything like that happened, um, just the fact that, you know, when I asked my body to perform, like it kept performing <laughs> and actually, like yeah. just feeling like even if like I honestly when I came in here I just wanted to do what I was doing in practice and if you know that put me 10th or if it put me first I was going to be happy because right. I was back and able because even last year I felt like my performance was a little flat mm -hmm. but I was looking back and I'm like hey I ran you know under 115 I think on that course last year or something and I'm yes. like it didn't feel great and I don't feel like I was as fit as I was in Oceanside, but you know, I was racing and I was there and I was trying to chase people down in that. And that's what I was looking for. Cause in these other races, it was like, you know, I was running slower than people's Ironman pace right. at the end of the runs. And that's just, that's what I think was really challenging for me is just like, I, I'm a racer. Like I want to race and I want to keep pushing myself. And, um, that was just a completely different type of suffering. Well, and so then when you came by here early on, it was like I said, Christian and yourself and Magnus. And then uh, obviously you don't want Christian to get to that last downhill uh, mm -hmm. with you still, you want him in rearview mirror somewhere because that guy has, he ran down this downhill to the world championships in the full uh, back in May. What was the, what was the strategy going throughout that? Because he, Christian yeah. talked about that you were surging and surging and surging. Yeah. So I, they gaffed me a bit on the downhill because I think Magnus must have this massive dish on the front. For he, a chain oh, yeah, yeah, about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he was pushing, and I just lost a little bit of connection. So there was a gap that opened up, and I was like, I, you know what? I made it pretty much through the entire bike. Like, don't kill yourself on this downhill. Like, I know I have a good T2, um, and my run has been really solid. And yes. I've done a couple big workouts on diagonal and found that I really liked running up it. Um, so coming into transition, I actually saw Fred and Magnus putting on their shoes a yeah. bit still. And Christian was just making his way out. And I thought, okay, um, like traditionally, like I can run a bit faster than Fred and Magnus. Right. And I felt pretty good coming out. So I'm like, those guys are first in my sights. And as I'm running uphill, I noticed that Christian looked like he was coming back towards me mm. a little bit. And I, I was like, huh, that's a little different. That, like maybe good. he's feeling Kona a little bit. So, um, I just kind of said to myself, like, I want Christian, like, and just set out to work all the way uphill. Um, probably ran maybe a little bit hard yeah. um, up there, but that was kind of part of the plan. And, of course. Um, yeah, when I hit that two mile mark and caught him, we had hit a steep uphill, and I'm like, okay, if he's gonna hurt, like, this is where it is, and tried to gap him a little bit. But I mean, everybody knows Christian, like, he doesn't give up. He'll go off on a stretcher before he lets anybody beat <laughs> yeah, him. So, exactly. um, once he continued to stay, it was just trying to figure out. And it was kind of almost like a chess match and figuring out like, okay, is he hurting more on the downhills or the uphills? Because I remember in Kona, Gustav was saying that, um, I, I think it was on the downhills or something that mm -hmm. he was starting to gap Christian a yes. little and the uphills, Christian was stronger than him. So I was trying to, to figure that out. And I was like, huh, in the uphills here, it seems like I might be a little bit better. So um, the downhill, the first time, we didn't do anything crazy. We were, I think we were both just kind of seeing where the other one sat. And, um, again, I kept testing him and I, when I came through that roundabout to go down to the park for yeah. the first time, the crowd was amazing. And that was like, okay, this is awesome. And came back up and the crowd just really got me going again. So I tried to like, you know, rile him up a little bit <laughs> and like feed off that energy. And, um, looking back at a video, I actually got a decent gap on Christian there and, tried to maintain, but he again, just like comes back, put me in the, the sights and just didn't let me go. Um, and so after that, again, it was just, I just was, I knew he would go early. I didn't really expect it to be three miles early. Um, cause I <laughs> Cause figured, you saw the Olympics, you went like one K one K. Yeah. And I knew like, okay, if you, whenever he goes, if you can hold his shoulder and then if you can just find that extra gear, like, you yeah. know, maybe you have a chance. Um, but yeah, he just had, an incredible move at three miles. Like I look back at some of those splits and I'm like, man, we like on my workouts, I, we could, I could run, you know, sub five on that downhill. But at the end of the race that we were doing, <laughs> I was like, man, his leg speed is still really good for yeah. coming off of Kona. And I just, my whole philosophy with that run too is, and, and racing Christian is, you know, the Norwegians are very good at what they do and they're, they've been dominant. Right. And 
you're not going to win a race by letting them dictate the pace because right. they always go, you know, just up to that line. So I was hoping, you know, take the race to him, put him on the edge and, you know, see if you can slowly turn the screws, like slowly surge and just see if you can hear some weakness to try and gap him. And, you know, as we came into that downhill, I was getting prepared for a surge at some point and, you know, maybe <laughs> I can weather it, right. or, you know, start thinking about a sprint finish. But, um, again, he just, he, he's 5K. really smart, you know, strategically. And I've talked to him about some of the other races that we've done and just how he was going to play it. And, um, I think the way he races, like it looks like, you know, he's just brute forcing it, but there's definitely a lot of strategy that goes into their racing. He, uh, now, did you race Christian and Gustav much at ITU? Um, you know, I think I, I went on and off like racing ITU yeah. quite a bit and they were coming up and obviously I was, I was in that race in Bermuda where right. they ran they away, the they podium, swept the podium. Right? Yeah, yeah. So they were a little bit more, they had more highs and lows when I was racing ITU with yeah. them, they weren't as dominant. Right. And I remember, I think watching Christian when he first like broke uh, into the scene and had a great race was when he broke away with Alistair Brownlee in Edmonton. Yes. I think back. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. I don't even remember that. I was like 17 or something like that. Yeah. And everybody was like, who is this guy? <laughs> and um, so they've definitely become much more consistent, I oh, think, yeah. which yeah. with their results. So um, did some racing, but I think too, like they have you know, done very well in ITU and I kind of forced my physiology into that. So never quite had you know, the runs, right. we, we were never running side by side like we did yesterday. <laughs> but that, I mean, with everything that's happened this year, to be at that tippy end of the race, to be with the gold medalists and the Ironman world champion, it, that has to be really fun. Because you, like you oh, said, yeah. you're a racer. You want to be side by side with the best. Yeah, I mean, the swim was fun. I had a lot of fun on the bike, yeah. just trying to see if I could hang with those guys. Yeah, yeah. And then the run, too, once I got Christian, I mean, um, I was never settling. Like I was going for the win yeah, the whole yeah. time, but I was thinking to myself too. I'm like, honestly, I have so much to be proud of. And like, this is so much fun. Like I'm leading the world champs. Like, <laughs> and I was, I mean, again, it, it was another Olympic medalist who took me down in 2017 when I was leading there, but it was, that was kind of flipped where I was the one who was pushing the bike in 2017 yes. and then on the back foot on the run. And this time, um, it was different cause I was, you know, following guys on the bike a little bit and seeing if I could hang on. And then I was kind of the pace setter on right. the run and the one who was, was in the lead there. So, um, that to me was a really big step forward cause, um, nobody labels Ben Canute as a runner. And I feel like yesterday, one eleven. Yeah, yeah, that's a runner. That's, I, I think one of the first times I've been top three run split. Yeah. overall. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think maybe I've graduated beyond just a swim biker at this point. Well, and you always, always one of those guys, especially 7.3 worlds. That's, that's your, that's your jam. I mean, say with, with Javier and then fourth behind, uh, Jan and Alistair and Javier yeah. in, in South Africa, you, you like the bright lights. Yeah. I mean, I, whenever we pick the main race that we want to taper for, for the year, um, and we, put in a good training block like we always seem to to get the world championships right in that respect so there might be some ups and downs during the middle of the year but I do love a world championship and there's something extra special about racing for something like that right um so yeah I mean in this course too being on U.S. soil two best results at a world champs in on U.S. soil is yes uh I think a little extra special as well rest of your season you take some time off now yeah, I think um, there's, I mean, I obviously I have some good fitness and there's yeah. part of me that wants to find a race in November and, and see. So, um, yeah, I'm going to take a couple of days to think about it and look at the schedule. But um, this was kind of the main goal and anything else is just, you know, icing on the cake. When we look at triathlon before PTO, people sort of had to step up and go, OK, I'm going to go full. Now with uh, Canadian Open, U.S. Open, I think we'll have at least one, maybe two, and Collins Cup mm -hmm. and 70.3s, there's really no pressure for people to step and start doing a full. Is it, what, what's your plans for the next couple of years? Yeah, well, I think the full is, is starting to call my name a little bit more. Ah. And, you know, I'm, I'm turning 30 in December. Right. Um, so it's not 
you know, I don't want to say back half of my career, but it takes a little bit to, to figure out the full, to figure out, you know, Kona and, mm. and all of that. So, um, playing with the idea of one and, um, maybe making it low pressure or something. Right. So, and I mean, um, right now with the PTO points, uh, they heavily reward doing an Ironman yes. and with the 10% bonus. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's starting to be more and more interesting, especially with the way that I've been training and the way that I respond to volume. Um, you know, some of my past coaches and even current coach feel like, you know, Ironman could be Your one thing. of my strengths just cause I'm such a diesel engine. Right. And you know, it seems like the longer I go kind of the better I respond. So, um, yeah, it's one of those questions that in the past that would be like a oh, future, but now it's kind of like, well, it's a little bit more interesting. Yeah, and you don't want to wait till you're 33, 34. Yeah, I know Crowe just... did his first one when he was 34. Yeah. But now guys are doing them at 21, 22, which I think yeah. is a little young. But yeah. if, you keep them, like... if you keep from doing too many of them, you're okay. I always wanted to you know, try and get my speed first, take my time. Yes. And, um, yeah, I've been doing the sport for a while now. And yeah, I, didn't, I don't feel like I, I jumped in too early or anything. Nope. And, it is. It's it's impressive. Some of these guys who are really young and having really good Ironman performances and um, like just watching Kona this year, too. It was really the first time where it's like, hey, I've raced against these guys. Like, I know what these guys do on the half distance. Like, right. Those are the ones that I'm competing against more versus, you know, 2019 and before in Kona, I'm watching and going, oh, yeah, that's like not the old guard, but it's but, not like it's not somebody who I was consistently right. like, oh, yeah, and like good I, friends I that with guy or every something. week yeah. yeah it's like um so that it just i think um made it a little bit more intriguing as well love it benny congratulations you we were we were all cheering man we were we were waiting <laughs> for that that big breakthrough race this year and and you gave it to everybody yeah thanks so much bob ben canute has been our guest second place ironman 70.3 world championship hold on we will be right back <laughs> 